Hey, it's Jeremy from Build a Soil and I wanted to go over the next step in our side-by-side. -side. If you've been following along, we're about to upgrade this tent and we're actually gonna put one of these lights in there. If you look up that way, it's the uh, Illuminar 750-600 double-ended. We're gonna compare that double-ended against six of these Vero Cobs 100 waters and we're gonna have their new Vero 600 rail system built out. We're gonna compare side-by-side. So to, to do that, we've got a mom of the Marshmallow, the Marshmallow OG from Compound, and this is the number nine out of 13 seeds that we chose last time as our absolute favorite. And so we, we grew a mom because I took some cuttings and life got busy, kind of neglected them. You can see some of those cuts down here and they're just coming out of their funk. But I didn't have six perfectly even ones and I want this side by side to go really well. So this mom has now got lots of good cuts. If you follow it on Instagram, we gave it some of our Build-A-Bloom yesterday, some aloe and coconut and some enzymes. We wanted to give it some extras to make this mom rage so that hormonally it was basically ready to go and we could take cuts that were gonna produce roots in a timely manner. And the Build-A-Bloom really helps because it has enough phosphorus to really make sure that there's none of that purple in the stem. They're not too woody. They've got that nice, fast amino acid driven uh, newer growth. And one of the things that drove that home is that this mom was kind of kind of coming out of its funk and less than a week ago it was half this size. It started just blowing up in size and it went from three leaves to four to five to six to seven. And so it's in a good time of an upward swing of growth where if I take cuttings we're going to get really fast roots. If I've got a mom that I'm neglecting and is in decline and is not, it's starting to crown on the top and pre-flower, not acting happy. If I go to take cuts from that to try and save it, they're gonna take a long time to root. And then there's some differences between the top of the plant versus the side branches. And if you look up information, there's a different level of hormones in different parts of this plant. And so even if I were to take all these cuts and do all these studies on it, just with water across the board and all environments being the same, nature's not gonna all root on the same day. You'll have some of these plants with more hormones, some of the cuts will root faster than others. Our job is to uh, maximize the opportunity for that to happen. And if you check out buildasoil.com in our blog section, I've got some articles that are written uh, on rooting cuttings or on taking clones, whatever you want to call it. But the most important part of that is not really the hormones that you use and the exact dome and all of that, or if it's a clean razor blade. In my opinion, the most important is a healthy mom and knowing the environment that is required to produce healthy cuts. And that means that you have to have high humidity so that the plants don't have to move moisture without roots. And you don't want too much light because they're gonna try and grow. You want them to be putting roots out, not trying to grow new tissue. That's when they yellow up. Um, we'll go over more of the details as we cover the part two video where we actually put these cuts into these pucks. And we're gonna try a few different methods today. Um, I've got a tray and we've got these uh, grow down inserts that you can power wash or put in the dishwasher and so they're really easy to reuse. And the other thing is they've got these spacers here that hold a little bit off of the bottom so that you can fill water in here and allow that water to constantly create humidity without soaking your pucks completely. And so I like that, that's why we recommend these, but you don't need that. You can use any sort of tray. In fact, if you walk over here with me, I've got a seedling soil recipe and this seedling soil we're trying in all these different size flats. And I, th I thought, why don't we try and put some cuts in here? So I took a screwdriver and I just put some holes in here. And we're going to slip some cuts right into the seedling soil and see if we can get some roots that way. And we're also going to be using the pucks that are over here that are a little more industry standard where you get better results. And, you know, these are sold in like 1,500 packs, 50 packs, that kind of thing. We'll show you how we use them. And let's get to it. So. The soaking solution, what I like to do is two steps, especially on scale. We'll make like a cup or a larger amount of a soaking solution, usually with our aloe vera or horticultural aloe and some fulvic acid. Some people use just the aloe. I like, I'm gonna add a little of this this time. And so then I'm gonna take all my cuts and I'm just gonna put them in here and soak them in that solution. You can do it overnight, you can do it over the weekend. I prefer to do it for about half a day up to one full day. I'm gonna go ahead and do the second part of this video probably this afternoon. So I'm gonna soak them for about a half day. I'm gonna make this formula right now. I've got a half gallon of water in my container. I do that to make the measuring a little bit easier so that I'm getting a more accurate amount. One teaspoon of this per gallon is, if you precisely do that, is the best results we've gotten for, for assisting in the rooting process. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get a half teaspoon in here, which is a little hard to do, but 
you can see why you do it just a cup is even harder. So a half teaspoon, I can at least get close. And so out of this product, I know it's a little pricey, but that's all I'm gonna need and you can do hundreds of cuts that way. So I'm gonna now go ahead and put that in there. And then this stuff works best if you just let it soak a little bit uh, because it does kind of clump together. And so I'll go ahead and stir it a little and then I'm gonna let it soak. And once it soaks for a few minutes, it'll fully dissolve. You can see the sap in it already activating in the aloe vera. Now what I'm gonna do is take, this is 20 milliliters per gallon. This is fulvic acid and it's full power. A lot of you guys are familiar with this. We've talked about this product a lot. We do have a powdered option, but this is our kind of go-to favorite for small scale. And so I'm gonna take 10 milliliters. Before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and shake it up. I don't think it matters, but I just like to make it even. So now it says 20 milliliters per gallon. I got about a half gallon, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour 10 milliliters in here. You can see it's golden, like the sun. So now we've got our aloe vera and we've got our fulvic acid. And I'm gonna make sure that this is stirred up pretty well. And then I'm gonna pour just enough to soak all these cups into my cup. And if I was doing several different varieties, I would fill several cups with this solution. I'd label the cup and then I'd put all the respective cuts into each labeled cup to make sure that I keep track of all of the clones. The other thing you can do is we sell these um, labels that you can wrap around the stem. And some people will take 20 or 30 cuts, bundle them with that label, sharpie it, and put all of the bundles in one cup. I prefer to have separate cups, that's totally up to you. I'm gonna take this solution, I'm gonna pour some of it right into here, and that's what I'm gonna put my cuts into to pre-soak. I've also got a pretty cool algae solution that we're gonna try. A local microbiologist brews this algae, and he says that it's a single cell algae that helps with agriculture, but he uses it for wastewater treatment because it produces so much oxygen. And so I know that oxygen and air is important to rooting cuttings. And so little side test project, we're gonna soak some of the cuttings in this algae solution and see if it ruins them or helps them. I have no idea what to expect. So that's something else that we're doing just for fun. Okay, come around here. I'm gonna take the cuts and as I take them, I'm gonna slip them in here. That way they uh, don't start to get droopy on me. And once I take them out of the light and I put them in the water, they're gonna remain turgid and happy. And then we'll just leave them like that. So in here, you can see that it's fairly clean down low and we've got lots of these branches. Now, this right here is too small. I could totally root that and it would work just fine because it has at least a node, it's pretty clean, but I'm not gonna waste that. I'm gonna take this one right here and I'm actually gonna clean all of this off and this is gonna be one healthy cut. If I'd waited a little longer, I could have matured this into some healthier cuts, but I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna snip all of this off and then later, I'm gonna do all of my final trimming when I go to put it in the puck so I have a fresh, clean cut when I go to puck it up. For now, I'm just gonna put that in there and we're gonna get a whole bunch more. I'm gonna try and go quickly. If it gets too boring, we're probably just gonna shut the video off and I'll update the second half of this video when we've got like a full jar of a whole bunch of cuttings. Now, I only need six of these, but the idea is, is that you probably take at least double what you need so you can pick the absolute healthiest ones to keep your small garden in peak health no matter what. Why would you take the runt clone that's taking the longest when that's not gonna be even and it might slow you down greatly? So we're just gonna take a whole bunch of these and then update as we go. This one was a side branch, but it's big enough to use on its own. Man, these, this smells so loud right now, I'm pretty excited. I know it was phenomenal on the first run, but I think we're gonna nail it this run because the timing was off last time. We had so many different varieties of that same, you know, of, of, uh, from that pack, so many different finish times. And so I think this time we're really gonna be able to nail it. Now, I'm gonna clean these ones off here. And I think we're gonna shut the video down right now because I think I got most of the point. When I'm done, you're gonna see this mom plant is, a, is much more clean back. And then I'll go over a couple of the points of that and show you what it looks like when it's done. Because once you're done taking the cuts, if you wanna keep the mom, you can clean it up and shape it so that it produces a whole bunch more cuts for you in rapid fashion. Um, but for now, I'm gonna take the rest of the cuts. If you've got any questions, go ahead and post them on this video. But this is a 100 gallon and it's a grassroots fabric pot, plastic line. It's got our Build-A-Soil light soil. It's on a second cycle. You can see it's full of worms and worm castings. 
full of life. And so you can learn more about this at the Build a Soil website. Um, but this is our preferred system and we're gonna do the whole side by side. And at least on Instagram, if I've got the time, we're gonna try and do more YouTube videos like this. I'll see you on the second half of this video in a few minutes.